Hey everybody, Charlie here. Welcome to a little bit of a preview video on Base One. I'm kind of like branching out and sort of experimenting with all sorts of different games here and presenting you some new things. Just to, I don't know, put some feelers out, see what you guys like. So Base One is a colony builder management survival game, if you will. Uh, but you build a base, you build a base in space. Basically, it's a uh, it's a space station game. Uh, and there's uh, a lot of core, a lot of cool elements to it. There is a campaign, and if you're interested in seeing more of this game later on, please leave me a comment down below. Let me know. Let me know that. Maybe we can start the campaign. It's got a decent little story to it, I guess. Uh, different pacing, and the pacing is the reason why I'm going to show you a custom game today. So I'm just going to hit custom game, and uh, we can choose our map. For the most part, I have not seen a difference other than just the look of it. And for that reason, I guess we're going to go with Gamma 4. Uh, you can start it up with the maximum amount of days that you want to play with the station. So after 120 days, the game will end. 90 days, 60 days, or you can go infinite and play as long as you want. This will not matter for this particular video, so I'm just going to leave it alone. We have a day-night cycle. I'm going to go ahead and just leave those as normal. Characters, low difficulty, crew rarely gets sick, status parameters increasing slowly, high, blah, blah, blah. Again, if we play this officially, maybe I'll up, up, up the difficulty here. But maybe none of this stuff is really going to matter necessarily for showing off the game. But I just do want to show you what there is because there's a lot of customizability that goes into the difficulty for you. So you can determine how many credits you start with, how many starting resources you start with, your supply, and if you have anything in large quantities or small quantities, etc. Uh, random missions, how many of those are there, or availability, gas clouds, whether or not you want enemy attacks. Yes, there's terrorists that can come and try to take your stuff. Meteorites, you have to deal with meteor storms, meteoroids, do you want those on? Radiation, do you want those on or off? Debris that goes through space and how much of it is available for you anomalies that can happen there's all sorts of stuff um, and then there's this one here and I really recommend you leave this on because without this on it, the game gets a little annoying in my opinion all device to device connections and logistics connect automatically corresponding upgrades in research tree will be disabled we're gonna leave this on because we don't need it all right so I'm gonna go ahead and start this just to show you what this game is all about and again, if you like this, please leave me a comment down below and let me know. And also, if you like the video, consider subscribing. The button's down there too. And you can just uh, you just click that once and then you're, you're set up and ready to go for all the other games we show here. All right, so here's our little spaceship, which is actually going to be our base. But for now, it's like a hub that you... It's, it's basically a spaceship. We move through it. If you go through the campaign, you kind of understand a little bit more about that. But uh, and we'll show that. If you're interested in more, we'll show that. But So this is our station. I'm going to go ahead and pause it really quick so we can just talk a little bit about uh, the interface and stuff. And actually, maybe not. Maybe we'll let this run, and I'll start building, and then I'll explain while we're building. I think that's probably better. We have our station interior button here. We can toggle that. And um, the stuff on the, in in the interiors and stuff seems pretty good. It, uh, they did a really good job with modeling. We have various different staff, including scientists as well as technicians. Scientists' jobs are more catered towards research, as you can imagine. And technicians are more towards building things and fixing things. Every single crew member has a variety of different needs and stats, as well as little bits of personality differences as well. If you take a look at this, uh, these are our two technicians. They each have their own salary. This is a company. We're paying them. We have to pay their salary. Uh, so you can fail by not having any money, too. They each have their own traits, including their own individual skills at a variety of different tasks, their own personality stuff, usually a positive and a negative trait. Um, and they can build relationships with each other and, and get into fights and stuff as well. You can get them, you can adjust their contracts and stuff, as well as assign perks as they level up, which they will do as they get experience. And then you also have their individual schedule. And right now, everything is work time with these two. Uh, but as we go, people are not going to like working all the time. So... Yeah. Anyway, uh, let's take a look at this really quick. We have their happiness ratings and stuff over here, as well as their food and water availability for them to uh, eat and drink. Of course, they're going to need to do that. We have a big tech tree. We're going to look at that in a second. But for now, let's take a look at construction because we need to expand our base. So construction menu has a variety of different things, including station modules and then devices. Modules are the big things that we use uh, to go into. And the devices are things that we put inside the modules. So hopefully that makes sense. Each one of these takes a different resource to build. So uh, for example, this is going to use construction units. Where are they? Right here. There's these two units right here. Let me take a look really quick. I want to know, make sure I got the name of this right. Station storage. 
So uh, there's construction kit M. This is the modules and construction kits D. Those are for devices. Uh, and so you can only uh, assemble things based on the stuff that you have right and so if you run out of these you need to obtain more either through trade or through getting space debris and sending out probes scout salvaging things etc uh, so that you can continue to build and expand we also have water as a resource oxygen and food rations as well as repair kits to repair various different things they are disposable you use repair kits um, to fix things when they break and you will need to make more repair kits in order to continuously uh, repair things so these resources and the quantity we have available are up here in the top right corner. Uh, emergency rations and stuff when we're really, really bad on food. Um, also, they will use spacesuits to go out into space. These will deteriorate after every usage and they will be disposed. And when they deteriorate completely, you'll lose them. So you'll need to replace these as well. Okay, so let's get and take a look at our modules. Now, in order to expand, we're going to need to expand life support resources that includes oxygen as well as heat and we're also going to need to sometimes provide water as well i think too um i think always water let me see construction all right so we have various different categories and first we're going to want life support because this has heat and oxygen connections we can build on one of the four sides and we can determine how far away just by sort of moving further away from it you can kind of get a preview of what it's going to look like and then to build it, you want to hold down the left mouse button. Now, this, um, the reason why you would want to, like, say, put it really far away is if you have other modules you're going to put next to it that need a little bit more space because some modules take more space than others. So I'm going to put one, like, say, right about here. This is our life support module. As soon as I queue this up, one of our technicians is going to go get a spacesuit, and then they can go out and start building this here. Okay. Now, while they're on that, we're going to need power as well. And there are power modules like this solar panel. You can see that they take a certain amount of module construction units to create. So um, I'm going to say that for this one, you know, I'm actually going to do two life support modules here. One back to back about like that. About like that, I guess. And then we'll go ahead and create a solar panel out this way. Come on. Line up and put it way out about here I think I think so uh, we can also if we want to later on uh, expand this direction with it and well as this direction with it just to add more solar coverage but you'll see why I wanted to have two life support modules in a second we're also gonna need in order to to communicate with our base or with other people we take a look at communications we have three other people we can uh, communicate with this is our level one chairman level three coordinator and the managing director each one of these guys has different things to say to us different tasks uh, to give us etc and they'll give us objectives that we can work towards to earn loyalty points so that we can get favors and exchange them for other things think of it like political capital sorts of things because this is a private endeavor we're a private corporation uh out to uh on a very out on a very specific mission which again if you um play the campaign or you want to see the campaign later we can look at that okay so next construction thing i'd like i like to do is get the transceiver up i'm gonna make this a small module right about maybe here so let's get the transceiver up this is gonna let us communicate with things uh but the other thing we're gonna really need is we're, we're going to need a docking port uh, so that people can we can trade with people so i'm gonna look at maybe getting a docking bay and i think it'd be kind of cool to put it out here but i want i want to put it as far away as i can so that i have room for other modules over here eventually i think uh so maybe we i don't want to put it here because you can't attach anything to the docking bay so having it be really close doesn't make any sense so i like to i like to put mine really far away but it does mean a little bit longer for ships to you know get resources in or whatever but i think it's kind of worth it so i'm gonna put this actually right about waiting for your orders uh yeah i'm gonna put it right about here i think so that's gonna give us a docking bay right there okay now let's take a look at the modules we put inside things so uh we're gonna take and look at the small life support module and we need to provide well life support throughout the, the ship for all sorts of different purposes and eventually and, and pretty soon anyway our crew is going to start getting a little antsy they're going to want places to sleep they're going to want to be able to eat right so we need to get on get on that construction of that stuff too so what i want to do first i think is we're going to get a small canteen this is the place where they can eat 
and I'm gonna put this off the side. I think eh, we could put production over here and then there are crew quarters and stuff on this side. I think that probably works better. Yeah. Yeah, we'll go ahead and do that. So let's get another life support module. Uh, is it too many resources to do that? I think it might be actually. I should probably be a little bit more cautious on that. We're playing at the easiest difficulty so that I can, you know, show you guys the game, but I don't really want to run out of resources in that easy difficulty either. So let's put a canteen right about here. And then I'll put a crew quarters over here and attach it there. Okay, place to eat, place to sleep, etc. Now there's a lounge and this is a place for them to unwind and relax and stuff. It's for mental health reasons, right? You need to be able to do that. So I'm going to I'm gonna go ahead and just hit three on the keyboard here and accelerate time a little bit to let them play on. But while we're doing that, we're also going to want to start getting our life support actually set up because you're going to notice we have solar panels set up right now, right? So what we want to do inside this is go to devices and inside the life support, we're going to put in a couple of things. We're going to put in a battery so we can connect uh, battery power and storage to the solar panels and I'm gonna actually put in I think okay. I've just completed the module assembly. I think I'll go two and two here. We'll put two batteries in and then we're gonna put this ELD and uh, I forget what this stands for. They explain it in the campaign. Um, I forget what it stands for, but basically this is gonna provide heat as well as um, oxygen to various different modules. Each one provides that those two resources to one module only. And by default, the module that stuff is in is not powered by that. So the, you'd have to use one to power the one that they're in too, which is a little bit unfortunate, but that's just the way that is. Um, so I'm gonna put um, another battery here and one more battery here, and then get another life support module there and one more here. Now it's important to note that you do not have to provide life support to every module, right? Um, it just means that they're gonna be very cold and they're not gonna have any oxygen. So if we take a look at this module here, there's these little bars next to these modules and you can kind of see them at a glance when you're zoomed out and stuff. Uh, there's the O2 level, there's the structural integrity of that module because meteorites and stuff can hit things and damage them and destroy them, terrorists and stuff too. And then we have the heat rating for it too. So oxygen, heat, and the structural integrity. And by default, pretty much everything's gonna have a full green bar because we haven't gotten damaged yet. But if the crew doesn't have to pass through this stuff, then there's really, you don't really need to provide oxygen and water or oxygen and heat to that module because the crew is not really moving through it. Now this is our docking bay, so people are gonna move through this, but as long as they're only passing through it briefly, really quickly, it's not really going to impact them if there's no oxygen or uh, heat in here. It's going to be very cold and they can't breathe for very temporary and then they're back out, right? So no big deal. And ready to proceed with the next one. All right, ELD is finished. Let's put some other stuff in here too. We want to go to construction and we want to, let's say, put in, in the canteen, we need a food dispenser. So we'll put that there like that. And we're going to do drink dispenser as well. We'll put that there as well as a place for them to sit and eat too. So we'll get two tables set up there and also there. And actually, let me test this because before you couldn't shift click things. And I'm wondering if you can do that now. So shift click. Oh, they do let you do that now. Excellent. They've made some quality of life improvements in this game and I appreciate that. Okay, good. So we can do that now. Everything's in place. Batteries are set up, but we need to connect things. So um, we're gonna go to this connections menu here. And there's also quick help stuff, and that's fine. So the quick, this this area here, automatically the power for the batteries is hooked up to the nearest solar panel for it. That's an automatic thing. And if we want to expand that a little bit, I have 148 left. Should I? Eh, I think not. I I think not. Um, now that I have a docking bay and a transceiver, though, I can trade if I'd like to. So if I go to let's say uh, supply. We can see that we have kit M, kit D, etc., and we can also get more people this way as well, right? It's sort of like this is a corporate endeavor. We can reach out to our, you know, the headquarters and have more people hired and sent. And there's a lot of people aside from just scientists and technicians, right? We have we have that, but there's also operators, which will 
uh, work with probes and stuff too. We have engineers, which will work at workbenches to create more advanced resources out of the raw resources. Medics will keep people healthy when they break bones and that's going to happen or get sick. That's going to happen. We have cleaners to keep the place tidy and also remove pollution and, and other types of things that can make people sick. Manufacturers will work with different reactors and food processing, smelting, etc. Biologists, of course, can you, if you can imagine, can culture meat production and incubators. And we have botanists to handle our soil containers, hydroponic baths, etc. for production. And then we also have bots and guards. These things are locked until you get later in the game. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to purchase with our... Uh, we have a bunch of money because, uh, uh, again, I'm starting this on easy just to show you guys the things and how it works. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and purchase, I think, all of them, uh, or at least a lot of them. So we're going to say 200 of these to start out with. This is the supply that we can buy. Um, down here, we're going to buy, I think, 200 of these as well for now. And uh, we can also buy different food rations and water and all sorts of other stuff too if I wanted to. And, you know, I think I might as well get... A little bit more food if I can and a little bit more um, let's say water if I can as well and then there's beverages and this is very important because this water is not necessarily the same as beverages they, they want beverages from the from the dispensers so um, we're gonna grab I think uh, all 165 if you put a number in that's higher than the number they have it defaults to bringing you into that number so this is maximum basically so we're gonna we're gonna have to take a shipment of this stuff I'm also going to go to the people tab and I would like to grab an extra scientist. This guy's salary is pretty low, but I bet you there's a reason for that. So uh, he's a level one science says, which is nice. This person here is also level one equal um, equal uh, skill level. Personality wise, though, this guy's got a bright personality, but he's a minimalist does not receive any positive effects from decorations. And um, he has a minimum working days of 18. Okay, she has a nothing in her contract. Okay, she's talented. She'll learn a little bit faster than everyone else and she'll gain 30% more learning experience. Nice, uh, but she's also lazy. Reduces the level of her skills during work. I'm gonna hire this guy cause he's cheaper, basically. Uh, I think I might also wanna go and get a medic just to help with bones and stuff later. Uh, but for now, I think maybe ex just an extra technician would be better, actually. So why don't we why don't we do that? Because I can build things and, and fix things better. This guy's conflict. The likelihood of conflict while communicating with other characters is increased by 50%. Yikes. I would rather him just have morale loss and then to create conflicts. So we're going to hire those two people as well. And uh, let's go ahead and order. Uh, no, I got I to hit. Okay. There we go. So the supply ship is on its way. We're going to get people as well as um, all those extra supplies. Okay, so the next thing I think I'd like to do is see if we can get set up with a lab for research. And I'm gonna put that over on this side. Like, maybe I want it over here actually. Put the lab over here. This ought to do. And the next thing to do is, work, let's work on another life support module because we're gonna need it. We'll put that right there. Okay, now let's set things up. These modules here, we're, we're working on them and that's cool. And we can eat there and drink there and we can sleep in here and all that stuff's gonna happen, right? Except there's no life support to these things. So we're gonna need to go to connections. We're gonna click on the ELDs and we're gonna need to navigate to what we wanna, what we wanna work with here. So for oxygen, we wanna provide to here. And we also wanna provide heat to here. Now that's all this one can do. Then, we're gonna click this one, uh, and we're gonna wanna provide oxygen and heat to the, this one here so they can move around, okay? We have oxygen and heat being delivered here. Now, for the power connections, the power really quick. Uh, yep, we're one battery pro providing for one ELD. That's what we have so far. Um, we have these as well, and uh, so far, they're just here on standby, fine. We need to get these sorted out, and they're almost built. There we go. So let's get our heat over here, I guess. And, you know, there's a more organized way to do this. You can kind of do it however you want. Organize these machines and have them do whatever. But for now, as long as these two modules and these three ones right here actually are set up, I'm happy. This final one here that's getting built, that will provide it to the lab. And then we don't need anything in here because nobody has to pass through it. 
and we don't need anything uh to these two back here because really these are just really quick pass through and then they never have to go to them again okay cool so let's speed up time let them get on with what they're doing and get them uh sorted out now that there is oxygen and heat in here these guys do not need to get suits on to assemble stuff so it speeds them up and they're gonna go ahead and get the drinks dispensers up the dining tables up we got more people in now that's nice now we can also set priority and this is a new feature that i didn't have when i played on twitch which is really nice so if i want the lab set i can tell them to set this as a priority and then what that will do is it will force basically suggest and i guess we can go with force one technician at least will prioritize that and do that before everything else so instead of building this stuff, I can say, hey, man, I really need this lab up and running now. Um, I wasn't able to do that before, so I'm really pleasantly happy that they did that. Uh, okay, so for construction now, let's see. Do we want anything? Uh, yeah, so the scientific terminal needs to go in the lab. So we'll put that in. Yep, and I'm going to set that as a priority as well. So they may get on that right away because I want to get started on research and show you how that stuff works. And I'm probably going to need more power, to be honest. This one solar panel isn't going to do it. Yeah. We have the resources to do this now. So let's go ahead and get power set up. I'm going to go. Oh, don't tell me this is not going to happen now. Yeah, there it goes. And we're good. Okay. And then I'm going to do another one because I can. And we're going to need it eventually. So. Uh, right about like come on there you go like that okay so three solar panels should be more than sufficient for what we're doing here now there's a day night cycle in the game i don't particularly agree with how they've implemented it but i understand it and it's fine um but there's a day night cycle in the game and you can see sunrise daytime sunset and night and this is sort of you know assuming that we're in orbit of this planet right and um the thing is the reason why i don't particularly like how they've done it is that the timeline kind of works on a traditional sense of what a day night cycle would be but in space this is not how it would be and if i'm wrong you go right ahead and comment to me but uh this is not how it would typically be sunrise and sunset um as soon as this body is out of the way we would have almost full solar coverage on that and then you would have almost full solar for three quarters of the day until this until this body got in the way and then the your your night cycle would be about a quarter of the length as your everything else and that's typically how that would be um this has that the night is only a quarter this has been adjusted a little bit since the last time i played it um but the thing that gets me about this though is that sunrise and sunset has a significantly less solar power right now we're at 90 percent um, you're going to get significantly less than that during sunrise and sunset, but I, I mean, I'm okay with how they've done it. I understand why they did it that way. Uh, and for balancing reasons, yeah, sure. Uh, but your daytime cycle should be a lot longer than your nighttime cycle, especially if you're really far away from the body as well. It would take you a lot longer to get around that planet and you would have a day cycle the entire time when you're doing that. All right. So it says we have no scientist probably because this doesn't have oxygen and stuff so let's get that set up we're gonna say um connections and we're gonna want to go and get that sorted so heat to here and let's also get oxygen to here perfect now this is the next life support module we have i set up another one right so i'm gonna go ahead and grab a oxygen there and the battery there and we'll set up another battery, I guess, here, too. It's fine. And oxygen there. Okay. All these solar panels are set up and stuff, but how are they connected with power? Let's take a look. And you'll see that they do not automatically connect to your batteries. And you're going to want to do that. So this battery is going to connect it to there. And this one connected to there. Very nice. Uh, we're also going to want to connect now i don't see a reason for now each one of these solar panels will produce a certain amount of power in this case 36 36 36 uh, that's at 90 percent. so let's say their baseline is 40 right and wh what we're looking to do is to provide enough power to the battery so that the batteries can power the whole base but um and these solar panels have been beefed up a little bit too they used to be a lot weaker maybe that's a difficulty thing i don't know but 
uh, we need to connect these all up. So I'm going to connect here and connect here. I don't see a reason I was going to go with to not connect every battery to every solar panel that's available other than just like the tedious process of actually dragging this line over. It's the only thing I can really think of as to why you wouldn't want to do it this way. But it is uh, it is what it is. So this is already connected here. That's fine. Uh, and then as these batteries get built, they should auto connect to the nearest, right? But I don't know whether or not they will. Uh, they'll. It, it doesn't matter. Either way, I'm going to want to drag connect power connections. So this one right here is automatically connected to that one. And uh, I think they usually do load balancing automatically. So they tend to connect automatically to the one that is under the least load. But um, I'm, like I said, I don't know if there's really a reason not to just provide to all of them. Other than, like, you could say it's like a concentration thing. So having this concentrated to two, this one doing two, this one doing two. But and again, the way I see it is if they're all splitting up their supply, it's all the same power. Um, assuming that the, the power load on all the batteries are the same. If this battery is powering a lot more, um, then you would probably want to provide more power to that one. But uh, it, it is it is what it is for now. This right here, we're going to go ahead and um, provide a little bit of extra power. Yeah, I think that's the reason why. So this one here, right? This battery right here. Which one is it? Maybe to simplify your grid, this is the reason to do it probably. I think that might be the case. Load balancing. What are you... Yeah, you're providing power to... I think it's this one here. You're providing power to multiple ELDs. See, we don't want that. So we can, we're going to get rid of that connection. And that's why this one's getting drained excessively, right? We're going to get rid of that connection. And we're going to instead have this battery provide it to this ELD instead. So it, we should be one battery to one ELD, kind of, right? Uh, and then there's some accessory stuff you can do too, like having one of your batteries uh, support the lab here as well but yeah we'll get we'll see how that works uh i may not have enough solar generation at the moment at the moment i don't because i have it's nighttime right now so we're gonna see the batteries get drained it's whether or not we get it in the during the daytime or not but now that we have research happening you can see he's got little progress bars and sometimes he can fail i because he's just producing research points for you to use and depending on his skill he can sometimes fail let me go really quick into devices and make sure that we're fully set up with enough beds and stuff to everybody to sleep in. I think I missed one right here. Yeah. Build that. And that should be the final thing we have to build temporarily. We're going to want to get a lounge too. So let's maybe get uh, a lounge going. And we can do that over here. Let's say. Or we can do it off this side. Because this is where the sleeping quarters and stuff is anyway. Yeah, we'll do it off. We'll do it off this side with the uh where, the, where they eat i think that's probably fine and then over here could be where our manufacturing and stuff would be you know, hypothetically if we had manufacturing going which we don't so let's take a look at the research tree so there is a lot of research here let me zoom out as far as i can which is further than it was the last time i played uh we start here right the easy start and there's all this stuff to do right a lot of different trees to look at uh, different branches the first one I think probably we should do just to make sure everybody's healthy is go down to adaptation and then to med bay and uh, maybe get the gym going too because their muscles and stuff will atrophy and everything. So, uh, And then we probably want to start looking at manufacturing so that we can start creating our own stuff instead of relying on base of operations or HQ or whatever. So um, if I say adaptation, we don't get anything for this, but it unlocks a new tree. That's that's probably what we should do so let's grab this and um i think the research points we have are down here there's level one two and three research points so some of this stuff takes research points that are more advanced or a combination thereof so we earn it based on this level one level two level three so it takes a little bit of time to get that to spend it and then we can unlock these for a very variable different rates as well Okay, now that we have transceivers, I just want to go ahead and see how the conversations and stuff work here. Uh, these are all voice characters, but I kind of want to see how they've changed the interaction between them because it used to be a really slow process. So let me just click Lee Chen and see what he has to say. 
Greetings. That is way faster than it used to be. Ah, uh, very good. So I can discuss an LP exchange. This is our loyalty points exchange to get things from him. Or I can ask him if he has any work for me. And here are some contracts. So he wants me to invent a new technology in a certain amount of time. If I can do that uh, within four souls, uh, four orbits, four rotations, whatever, uh, we can get an airlock. Then he'll get 20 loyalty points or I'll get 20 loyalty points from him. Likewise, if I can collect a certain amount of resources in a certain amount of time, etc. So there's lots of different um, tasks and stuff. So airlock, let's see, where is that? And um, how long would it take me to do that if I was going to do it? We're disconnecting here. So in the tech tree, airlock, okay, where is this? So if I'm taking a look at, probably not communications, it's Prob I want to say it's probably advanced life support, maybe. Better batteries, airlock, way over here. So I'd have to get better advanced life support and then come all the way over here and get airlock. And then I can earn loyalty points by doing that. And I get um, space for one spacesuit. And then the airlock, which doesn't look like this stuff is scaling for 4K. So I apologize for how small this is. Um, let me real quick see if the UI can be scaled. Uh, I really hope more developers consider higher resolutions. I really do. Also, it looks like to me, I'm not getting the fullest quality I can here. Let's jack these up. See what this game looks like. Yeah, we're good. It doesn't look like they're going to scale the UI though. I, I, again, I really hope more developers in the future consider that because higher resolution gameplay is becoming more common. It's not that common yet, but it's becoming more common and it would be really nice if they considered that in the future. So in any case, we've got this, and now we have even better looking graphics. Do you notice a difference? Maybe the textures are a little sharper. I can actually see the fine tuned details of this floor now. Ooh, hey, the lights are a little bit more badass as well. On my screen, I don't know how it is for you guys, but on my screen, it looks pretty good. I like the detail work. And of course, if you want to see the base with the tops on, then it looks like this, which is kind of nice. I've actually never seen this thing before this is our our transceiver uh, it allows us to communicate right that looks pretty badass we can get turrets and stuff like gun missile turrets and stuff to help with meteors and uh threats and traders and stuff too um yeah, traders uh traitors as opposed to the traders which trade things with us right um so looks like we have two scientists now if we want to get stuff even faster we could put in another research bench so let's put that in right here and this room still doesn't have any life support but I'm more concerned about the lounge having life support and it looks to me like we're not providing heat or oxygen to any room specifically so why don't we have this one go here and here and then we'll have you go to here and also go back to oxygen and go to here Okay, now that this room is going to have oxygen and heat, we can then build the stuff that goes in it, which in this case is just these couches. This is a place for them to unwind and uh, not have to worry about the day, all the things that they've done today, right? Okay, cool. So we have a message, looks like. Message from Muhammad Begley. I have no further assignments. Can you help me? I have no further assignments. Can you help me? Ah, well, that would probably be our scientist guy. He's got nothing to do. Well, we want to build. You have something to do now. I just gave you the research bench. This guy just keeps failing. Actually, we should provide power to that, shouldn't we? Unless it happens automatically. Please say it did. It did. Okay, good. Feel good about that. You used to have to do it. You used to have to do it automatically, and I'm glad that stuff is happening automated now. Uh, you used to have to do it manually. Sorry. So let's get the med bay. I think we get the med bay because it will, uh, we, could, we could bring in a medic. It earns us some loyalty points as well. And um, we're going to get people with injuries and stuff. And when they're wounded, they're a lot less effective. Um, so yeah, we want to help, help with that too. I like how they've also added these little UI elements. They didn't have this last time when I was on Twitch either. Um, now it's showing me the power output on these because before it was kind of hard to tell. So right now we're pumping in 19 and we're drawing eight. Now this is this means we're increasing power. 
but is it fast enough because remember there's a zero here through the night cycle and kind of like an even steven thing uh for sunrise and sunset on these things so we we really should be generating a lot more than we're using during the day it's probably a good idea i think in this case to drop even more solar panels or to specialize them so in this case we have three life support modules and if we wanted to power them faster maybe that is the maybe that is the justification for it let me see if this makes any difference whatsoever if nothing else it might make a difference in sort of like our management of our own systems but let me just see really quick if i cancel this 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 uh we go this this we could just cut the power on all this stuff pause it really quick let's just cut the power on all of these um i think that's the wrong one yeah i did the wrong one there well we'll have to fix it that one uh and then this one this one i mean it shouldn't make a difference but i just want to see if it does so we're going to cut these ones too every basically all the power connections to the solar panels i want to cut them all right so this i'm going to redo all the power and i'll see you guys in a second <laughs> All right, so I've reconfigured everything and it doesn't make a difference. I didn't think it would, but I just wanted to see if it did. Uh, so now we have basically this solar panel is only providing power to two batteries. This one's doing the same thing to these two batteries uh, and these two batteries. So either it's three to two ratio on that basically right now or for each one. Uh, and then you need to provide power here, let's say, and we're gonna have a different battery provide power to this one. So now we have that whole thing set up now too. Okay, good. So it did, yeah, it did make a difference. I didn't think it would, but it is what it is. So when we add a new life support module, we're probably gonna wanna add another solar panel. And every time we add a life support module, we add a solar panel. And that's, I think, probably the way to go ahead and do it. So uh, yeah, these guys can get replenished and they're in the lab now. They can just hang out in here. They can do nothing. And we're gonna start seeing their fitness come down and we're gonna need a gym to do that. So what I'd like to do is check out research tree again. Med bay is done, so we can get medical station tier two if we want to, or we can go for the gym. I think we're gonna go for the gym, but we don't have enough research points yet. We have 15, this takes 25. Can we do something else? Well, we can maybe come up here, get better energy from our solar panels. That's probably a good thing to do. So let's go ahead and start this. And then we can also, by the time we're done with this, we'll probably have 10, we can get this. And this just upgrades the solar panels output by 20 percent so that's that's going to be really nice for us to have as well because it means we can charge our batteries even better right now we're getting a little bit of power at sunset but we're drawing a lot more and this one's providing power to the lab so it's drawing off a little bit more than usual at nighttime we'll get basically no input and it will be entirely output so that's why you want to generate a lot more than you're using Let's see, we have 208 of these construction units. I'm gonna actually add another set of solar panels if I can. Can I do that? I'm so glad that they're letting me do this. We, they weren't letting me do this before. This whole solar panel chaining thing, I wasn't able to do it before and now I can and it, oh, so much better. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And like, that's fine. Okay, so even more solar. Yes, very good. And then, you know, they just come in, right? we get all our stuff delivered here and they just walk right in where there's life support, right? Advanced life support is done for research wise. We have eight more points. Let's take a look and let's go ahead and get our upgrade uh, for the advanced energetics as soon as we're able to do so. All right, so the solar panels are done and um, that's great. But one of the reasons why I like connecting it to all available things is that I don't have to worry about I just, it's an automatic thing, but as the base gets more and more complicated, that's a lot of lines to drag, right? I get it. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna focus on some of these that are drawing extra power because they're connected and I'll have them get an extra benefit by sort of having one solar panel just focusing on them. So to do that a little bit easier, let's go ahead and disconnect this one and we'll have instead this uh, actually, let's disconnect this one. We'll have these two be the, the ones that are more advanced load. I think that's probably better. So we'll have you go to there, and we'll have you go to there. And then you two are going to get the extra benefits. So we'll have you go there, and we'll have you go there. That way, hopefully, 
we pump in a lot more power than we use. Um, and since also these ones are almost depleted, we can start drawing it off of this one a bit more. Okay, I'm going to let this run just a little bit longer. I'm going to get the, the solar panel upgrade now, but I'm going to let this run just a little bit longer so that I can start building other modules and stuff. And the first thing I'm going to build is med bay. And I want to have the med bay kind of in the middle of all of these things, I think. So we'll have the med bay go here. And then I also want to get the gym going, which I have to do research for. And I want to show you the gym too. So let me let it run just a little bit more. And uh, I'll be right back. All right, advanced energetics is done, thankfully. Uh, I also took in another shipment so we can get more people and stuff too. And now that we have 16 research points... Oh, yeah, well, I, maybe the training center is better. This is the terminal. No, no, I want the gym. So I have to wait a little bit longer for that to get that research, those research points. But uh, no biggie. I probably could have taken more scientists as well just to speed up that research even further. But um, yeah, I didn't do it. So we're back to almost full solar coverage, 87%, usually 90% around that area is about what you can expect. So we take a look at the connections now. Um, these guys, this is this is heat, sorry, uh, power, here we go. Now it's generating 46 each instead of the 36 or whatever we had. And it looks like maybe at maximum it will do over 50. So that's pretty good. And now we're able to generate, we're putting, pushing 69 into this one and only expending 10. So our batteries are definitely getting filled up now. Uh, these two are getting the extra benefits of a single uh, solar module. So that's pretty nice. But now that we've expanded this, right, and we've uh, we've made all of these a little bit better, I don't think we really need this extra little bit. So let's just dis de detach that. And um, what we're going to do then, I've built this extra the life support module here. So we'll go ahead and get more of uh, the oxygen go and more batteries there we go so now with that life support uh with with the solar panel upgrade we can afford more life support in our in our base here and i'm gonna go ahead and do that too we're gonna put another life support module on this side because i want to start getting probes and manufacturing and stuff going and i'm gonna need to expand in order to do that so in order to do that also i probably should go down manufacturing first um and, and I, you know, gym's not the gym is not as interesting as this, but we have the benefits of being able to buy things for now. Um, so I want my people to be healthy and stuff for now. We can buy everything we can manufacture at least temporarily. So uh, one more research point is what we need, and we got it. Cool. Let's go ahead and do this. We'll get the gym. And ready to proceed with the next one. All right, good. So this is our um, this is our med bay. Ready to proceed with so let's get stuff set up for the med bay. We want this, the medicine station. And we really only need one for now. As our base gets bigger, we're going to need more. But I have a medic. I did bring a medic in. I believe that you, you're the technician. One of you guys is a medic. I don't remember where you are. Is it here? You look different. Yeah, Connor. Connor is a medic. And Connor is a level one medic, but he also has mercantile trait which increases the salary requirements. Again, every person you hire, there's a salary involved with it. We also have a cleaner that I've brought in too, and he will just walk around basically and clean things. That's his job is to walk around and clean things. So where is he? Is he, that's a technician. Uh, I think it's this guy. Yeah, here he goes. So when things are, uh, when things are messy, he's gonna clean them up basically. That's all we needed to worry about for him. So that just keeps everybody, all the stations. This one guy can handle it. And every once in a while, you're going to hear somebody scream. You know? Ah! That's just frustration over failing their job. So this guy just failed. And he's just ah! like really frustrated about it. No big deal. Uh, so we need want to provide this new room here too. Let me see. So we got... Logistics going here. We're going to want to have provide Game oxygen ready to, proceed with the to let's say we'll put, put oxygen and stuff in here. Yep. Let's do that. And then also heat. Put that in here too. Pretty good. And then power is being provided by this battery. We're going to want to um, disconnect that, I think, and have it hooked up here instead. Just gonna have the, for simplicity's sake, I'm just gonna have the batteries that are in the life support module provide power to the ELDs in that same module. 
Uh, but you can see this, even when this one's under increased load, we're still able to provide more than we're spending. It's nice. Um, this one's getting auto hooked up to there. Um, I don't believe there's any reason for this connection to exist, so let's put that out. This should drop that down, and now we have this connection happening um, just like that. So you are connected there, and you are connected there. Beautiful. Okay. So now it says there's no patient, which is fine. Um, it's, if nobody's injured, then that's a good thing, right? Let's add one more couch over here. Nope. Oh, uh, like this. Yep. Uh, one more couch. Yeah, I might as well just do two. I have the resources to do it in this mode, so I might as well. Uh, okay, so life support's being built. Can we get manufacturing? This is 15 points. I want to show the manufacturing system, too. And it looks like manufacturing is here. Now, it's 10 and then another 10. So we should be able to get that. However, I have to wait till Jim finishes. It's almost done. And... Assembly Good. Well now we want probes first, actually. So astrology's first. Yeah, yeah, because manufacturing is pointless unless you have the probes um, to get the resources to start that manufacturing, I think. So we want to get probes going, and that's going to be here, astrology 20. Next, because we're going to get probes going, I want to go ahead and go for supply, and I want to find an operator. So let's get Spartacus. Just because his name. I don't even care if he's testy. His name is Spartacus. Come on. We're going to get one of those, one of these guys. And then let's just get some more of these because I have the cash to do it. I don't, I'm don't. i running out of cash, though. Remember, we have to pay salaries soon. So I'm actually overspending on the building material stuff. But I think it'll get corrected in the end. Well, not in this video because this video is getting too long. And we're not going to get to the point where we're bankrupt or anything. So that's why I'm splurging. But if we were if we were playing differently than just a single video, I probably wouldn't be splurging quite as fast. But I, I, I'm trying to show off the game here. So let's go a little bit here. Devices, get the batteries and stuff put in place here. And battery to support that here. For the time being, we'll just put those two in. And uh, let me check and make sure the power connections are appropriate. I don't need... Yeah, I don't need to do that really quick. Let's get rid of this. We'll have both of these batteries drawing their power from the single solar here. Okay. Good, good, good. Now, the gym. Want to do the gym. Want to do the gym right here. Uh, let's put the gym. You can probably take it off of this. This doesn't have heat right now. I wonder if I just forgot to hook it up or if I'm under. I might not be hooking it up right. Um, I don't want to put it here, which I know it makes more sense and it's like nice and fit, but um, I'm not providing any life support resources here and I, I, I'm, we're going to be passing through this area. I want them to be to have that. So um, I'm going to actually put it over here. The gym will be next to medical, which I think makes a bit more sense too. Think of it like the physical therapy room is right next to the medical area. That's fine for me as well. Okay, astrology research is done. So that means we have access to probes and stuff now if we'd like to. And we can get a probe upgrade for deep scanning as well, but I, I don't really care about that. Right now I'm gonna grab manufacturing so I can show it. No, I'm not. I don't have the I don't have the parts for it. Uh yeah, whatever. Let's take uh, connections here and I want to provide heat and oxygen to this little area. There we go. And then we'll provide it like so there and also right there okay and then we'll get have you provide it to our new manufacturing area or sorry our new uh probe area so station modules we're gonna look at industrial this is our hangar and the hangar is for the probes and trying to get that stuff happening so we're gonna put the hangar right here and uh turns out i'm gonna provide life support to this anyway <laughs> now i'm not providing it here but whatever. Um, you know, I could probably just do another life support module here anyway. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that really quick. Uh, where is it? Right here. And we could stick it on the side of this. We could stick it over here. It's just enough to provide life support to everything, right? So I could probably stick one more over here, actually. Let's just build two of them. Why not? 
And then if we're going to do that, we got a little bit of, we got a whole bunch of modules left because I've spent the money for them. So why don't we also go ahead and expand this even further? Is it silly to keep going out this long? I don't think so. Go like that. And off the side like this. Okay. I'm going to let all this stuff build and I'll be right back. All right. Life support stuff is dropping in and that's cool. We'll keep expanding on that. Uh, for the time being, I think I'll just go ahead and drop a couple of batteries in that. So we'll just say here and here. Yeah, I probably should hold shift. I'm, I'm not used to that. It wasn't allowed before. Uh, okay, so we have uh, our hangar and our gym. Let's just start with our gym. Yeah, let's just start with the hangar first. The hangar is more useful. So if we want to construct stuff in the hangar and we're looking for these probe bays right here, this probe launcher. Okay, and we're just gonna drop one probe launcher right here for the time being. Now I went ahead and got an operator from HQ. I, I went and hired an operator. So when this is built, the operator should just get right to work and we'll put it in automated mode. So it will go and search out various things. Now, what kinds of things would it be searching out for? Well, you might've noticed these icons that are all on the left side and wondering what the heck they are. Well, this is our hub, but there's also other objects right we've got these asteroids and stuff over here we've got this stuff right here right and as we just move through this we need a probe to analyze it and figure out what's over there so that we can potentially mine it we have some gas that we can uh, collect as well and then there's unknown objects that are hanging out in space that so we just we can sense it but we just don't know what it is the probe needs to go and check it out if you put the probe on automated mode it will just go out and do these things automated for you uh, or you can designate the type of cargo you'd like to do like please do the unknown objects or please do the gas or please do asteroids etc you, you could do that as well if you're missing a certain thing but these things are uh sort of like uh, automated is going to be fine for me for now Ready for the next one. so i want to go ahead and prioritize this really quick have them do that just this life support's assembly. up and running Ready i'll just go ahead and drop batteries in there for now we can prov provide power to things there we go and there we go okay cool and let's see the gym here we go so the gym is real easy to start with we're just going to use sorry we're just going to use the uh treadmills and this again just a way for them to get some exercise right their their muscles and stuff will atrophy We'll just build three of them, I guess, for now. They're going to, you know, get real weak and stuff, and we don't want that to happen. All right, probe launcher's done-ish. There it goes. Nice. So now we need to provide power to it. It doesn't seem like it's... Nope, it did. It got it got itself hooked up automatically. Cool. But now it says there's no probes. Oh, boy, I didn't buy them. Let's go ahead and do that before it's too late. We want to grab probes. Right here, there's eight at base, we'll go ahead and actually buy all eight of them. Order it. Uh, hang on. Do we want to get any people? I don't think so. This video is pretty long, and uh, we'll probably wrap up here. Uh, but I, I do want to show at least a little bit of this. It, it, realistically, you'd want to get engineers and stuff, too, to start manufacturing stuff. But I mostly just wanted to show you the probes heading out, because I think it's kind of cool. So I'll go ahead and just order the probes. And uh, when it's all done, we will uh, we'll see them in action. And then this is uh, this is base one. So I, I hope that you guys have enjoyed this video so far. It's um, It's been pretty cool. There's our supply ship. I don't think I've actually focused on that coming in yet. So the pli supply ship comes in right through space. It's got a, the engines and the look and stuff is very expanse. Like I'm, I feel like they were ex inspired by the ex expanse because this, it looks very cool, especially with, like the blue engines and stuff back here. It's really, really cool. But it slowly comes in, it you know slows itself down, it docks itself here, and then you'll actually see like an airlock and decompression kind of thing happening. Nice. And then once it's all equalized in pressure and stuff, then the doors will open. Well, if there's people to come in, the doors will open. Otherwise, it's just cargo. So now that we have probes, let's go back over here, and we should have probes. Yep says no probe uh frame rates frame rates here we go probe durability it's ready so our operator which is not this guy our operator should be coming to uh to take care of this i wonder if the frame rates are because of anti-aliasing i 
did turn it all the way up. I may just turn it off really quick, see if that helps at all. I turned everything else up too, so. No. There's, there's uh, early access versions and stuff of the game. There's you know, performance stuff, optimizations and stuff to make. Yeah, even with no, even with no uh, anti-aliasing on it, it's still real dog in it right now. All right, so the operator's on his way into work. It's the start of his work day. And uh, he's just gonna go in here. He's gonna start launching this probe. He's gonna drop down and it's gonna fly over to a resource somewhere. So let's just, it doesn't fly very fast initially, but you know, it picks up speed. It's kind of how it, uh, sort of how it works in space, right? And off it'll go to find resources. Let's go see what it, what it scans first. Wow, it's going fast. I gotta figure out what it's, what it's going towards. Got a long way to go, man. It's so far well, away. It's all done. Ready for the next one. Wow. It's uh, I'm going with it. I'm going with it. ELD, ELD device is broken by accident. Pollution has occurred. Oh, we have a cleaner. There we go. So it looks like it's heading over here. Assembly completed. Ready for my next task. Good. It's gonna stop here, and then it's gonna come up here and scan. Oh yeah. Scanning resources. It's gonna tell us what it is. Takes a while too, doesn't it? The assembly is all done. Ready for the next one. All right, the scan's almost complete. And done. We have a new, as an iron ore field, it tells us we have this much iron ore. Nice, okay, and then the probe heads back. Now, what I'm curious about, I don't remember uh, how the balance of this works. I'm curious of whether or not that probe is like gone forever sort of thing. Let me just kind of get all the way back to base and we'll let this thing come on back. Because I think it has to return to the base here. All right, the operator is controlling it. So, the remote controlled thing. Come on up. The probe durability. Ah, so yeah, we are going to get yeah one probe at a time kind of thing and off it goes to do another one. Now, if I want to do, uh, you know, two resources at a time or whatever, I can just drop another probe uh, launcher here and then get a second operator and then I can do two at once, right? And that pretty much scales that way with every other resource in the game. It's uh, it's kind of nice. So there you go. This is base one. I hope you've had a, a, a nice look at a new game. Uh, let me know what you think down in the uh, comments down below. I appreciate it. Uh, you can also give the video a like and subscribe and do all that stuff. I hope you'll join me for the next video. It's been fun. Bye-bye.